What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander, courtesy of Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because this is Mitsubishi's three row SUV. Not only that, this is Mitsubishi's best seller right now, as well and there's good reason why we'll get into all those reasons within the video but not only that you do get america's best warranty as well being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten years one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain so that's a good bit of peace of mind right there as well and actually if you go to younger mitsubishi here in hagerstown they will also give you a double powertrain warranty which means 20 years 200,000 miles which is absolutely insane and they don't charge over msrp either regardless of where you live so that is pretty exciting but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels for the 2023 outlander first one being the es starting at twenty nine thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars se for thirty two thousand one sixty five black edition starting at thirty three thousand five hundred and sixty five sel which actually is the one we are in today starting at thirty five thousand eight sixty five and then there is a 40th anniversary edition which is new for 2023 starting at forty one thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars but i know a lot of people are going to be wondering right now why didn't you say the PHEV or the plug-in hybrid that one I typically reserve for its own separate video and I will be doing a review on that as soon as I find one so I just did want to mention that but regardless of trim level that you go with power plant on the Outlander is going to be the same powering the beast is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 181 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 3600 rpm power sent to the front wheels or all wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters which you guys know we will of course be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time approximately 8.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 24 in the city 31 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the outlander i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a circular dial directly behind the shifter and so through that drive mode dial it actually gives you different settings like eco normal tarmac gravel and snow and actually mud as well if you were to go with the all-wheel drive or all-wheel control system only and by the way Outlander comes with an all-wheel control system which is kind of a four-wheel drive system made for rally racing so having said that you are going to be 100% on point in the snow or gravel because all-wheel control system by Mitsubishi was made for racing in those particular climates in the snow and the gravel so did want to mention that but ultimately these drive mids will adjust things like the shift points of the throttle response and the traction control setting so having got now all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react and let's see how quickly we can get this thing here up to speed all right so before we do this paddle shifter and acceleration test i wanted to mention to you guys there is a manual shift mode to slide the shifter all the way to the back yet again and i have now done that so we are projecting in first gear here on the digital gauges which you guys will love we'll get to that in a second but three two one yo baby huh all right so it's a cvt so it's technically simulated shifting but having said that the paddle shifters are lightning quick i like that not only that this is a wonderful digital gauge cluster i like how everything that you pass is lit up in this like royal blue it's such a cool design and cool colors to the shifter so to take it out of manual shift mode just slide it all the way to the back yet again and that gives control back to the outlander but having said that it's not the quickest thing in the world but with 181 horsepower 181 pound feet of torque and a three row suv it's kind of to be expected honestly though zero to 16 8.2 isn't bad you're definitely not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway but having said that a uh, little more power in this thing might not be a bad thing maybe a naturally aspirated v6 i would personally prefer but the outlander still has plenty of power so you're not going to have any issues but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch ventilated rear discs as far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes it's going to come in in an insanely impressive 115 feet let's just tap the brakes here 
It feels great. It feels perfect. This is the perfect braking feel for the Outlander. Typically with three row SUVs, a lot of times you will find a soft braking feel with no emotion. And it's not the right feeling, especially for a three row SUV, because you want to know you're gonna be able to stop relatively quickly, especially if you got kids in the back, which you more than likely will in this particular vehicle. So 115 feet is brilliant because when you compare it to other three row SUVs, a lot of them will come into the 130s. Maybe the Volkswagen Atlas, for example, comes in at 139, so 115 feet is absolutely brilliant. That's exactly where you wanna be and where I wanna be at in a three row SUV. So well done Mitsubishi on the braking feel overall. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine on these smooth Hagerstown roads so far today. Honestly, I haven't had any issues, but really what impressed me the most was the steering feel. Steering feel is definitely weighted on the heavier side of things, not to mention the 10-2 grips are bolstered like an M steering wheel in BMW. They are so thick and it's perforated as well. So it's such a nice feel on the grips. And again, it's a heavier steering feel. So it feels like you're driving more of a sports car as opposed to a three row SUV for those reasons. So I'm 100% in love with the steering feel. I will say that. So as cabin noise goes, we're going 45 miles per hour. I'll let you guys be the decider of that. Definitely not a whole lot of wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin. So honestly, for me, it's been perfectly fine there. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back with those second row headrest up. Now, I'm not sure how it would look with a third row headrest up, and we'll get more into that a little bit later, but with just the second row up, I can see 100% perfectly fine. Did want to also mention though, a head-up display is available. It doesn't come standard, but it is available for you if you wanted it, and that's gonna project your speed, speed limit, and safety features up onto your windshield, better help illuminating what is in front of you, so you're less likely to take your eyes off the road. So that's gonna assist with forward visibility as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander. All right, you guys, and so just now as it begins to rain, this is the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander finished in black diamond, in case you were curious of our exterior color. By the way, this one's VIN number starts with a J, AKA this one is built in Japan. So JDM SUV here, that is pretty cool. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front because this thing is blacked out and it looks dang good. So let me first start with, on top of the hood here, you do have the Outlander lettering spelled out horizontally. That is going to be finished in black. That looks dang good. Of course, to the sides, you actually have LED headlights coming standard on every single trim level across the board. Big fan of that. They do, of course, come with LED daytime running lights, which are actually gonna be located on top here. That is what you guys are looking at right there. That looks pretty cool. Automatic feature with those headlights as well, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. So a little convenience feature, but just underneath of the headlights, you guys can see we do have fog lights, LED fog lights to be exact. And that comes on the SE trim level and up if you did want those. Chrome accenting surrounding those headlights as well. That looks dang good. Just to the very bottom then, you got some aluminum trim accenting kind of uh, rounding out the front end and just underneath the Mitsubishi logo, you have your adaptive cruise control sensor built into that front grille. So overall, very, very good looking front end on that Outlander. I would say one of the better looking ones and decades away from what it used to look like. So huge fan of the exterior front end here, but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, all the way to the top, silver roof rails coming on the SEL trim level and up. So therefore we do have those up top. That is pretty cool. To go along with that silver trim, you got some belt line molding as well. It definitely looks good. There is a uh, floating roof line towards the back on the C pillar. You can't really tell because we have a black exterior design and the floating roof line is going to be in black, but on other colors available, that is definitely gonna look pretty cool. I also have a gloss black A pillar, but again, since we have the black exterior, you're not gonna be able to tell yet again. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board, so you got some privacy for the rear passengers there. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated on the SE trim level and up with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. Of course, there will be a couple different variations, 18 inch alloys for the ES, however, all other trim levels are actually going to give you what you are currently looking at, which is 20 inch two-toned aluminum alloys, and they look dang good in my personal opinion. They look right at home on our black exterior that we have with us here today. So 
Overall, very good looking side profile yet again. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so starting all the way to the top up there, gloss black shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, of course. You do have the SAWC badging found on the rear glass there. That is that all wheel control system if you were to go with the all wheel control variant as opposed to the front wheel drive, of course. LED tail lights actually do come standard on every single trim level across the board. So I'm a big fan of that as well. And if you happen to wander onto a Mitsubishi lot, maybe on a Sunday where there are no salespeople to uh, bother you, I guess you could say you do have trim level badging found on the rear tailgate there. So that is a surefire way to distinguish what trim level you are actually looking at. You do have some aluminum trim found to the very bottom of the Outlander. And then just below it all, getting down in the brush here to show you guys, there actually is a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away though. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back of the Outlander, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob. There is a button by the driver's side left knee. It is a power tailgate, so there's a button on the tailgate itself, but it is a hands-free power tailgate if you were to go with the SEL trim level end up. So kick your foot underneath. It's gonna automatically open up if your hands are full, let's say. So that is pretty cool. But once opened up, cargo capacity behind that third row comes in at 11.7 cubic feet. Of course, if that was not enough, space you can of course fold that third row down bumping that up to 33.5 cubic feet then with all rows folded 79.7 cubic feet which is about exactly the same size as my current three row hyundai suv the hyundai santa fe so that is probably why i'm digging the size of this thing so much but anyways in the back cargo area of course do find cargo lighting there is a 12 volt power outlet back there as well you don't always get that there's a cargo cover back there there's grocery bag hooks there's tie down anchors and then if you were to lift up on underneath the cargo floor there's actually some in-floor storage where you can put the third row headrest if it's not in use or you can just take those headrests out if you never plan on using the third row and put maybe an ice scraper back there or a tire inflator kit or something like that so do want to mention that then make your way to the third row legroom that is going to come in at 28.7 which quite honestly isn't a heck of a lot that's kind of less than my old ford mustang gt so not a ton of space maybe small children might be okay but do want to mention that for reference i'll give it a shot i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there and there are some cup holders for the third row passengers so i do want to mention that as well but so then making our way up to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 39.9 inches again for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row so plenty of space for me back there usb charging ports there's going to be a regular one and then a USB-C or USB-A and USB-C I should say. And by the way that's for the SE trim level and up but then if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up you're going to get tri-zone climate control so therefore the rear passengers can set their own temperatures but not only that heated rear seats for the SEL trim level and up that is pretty darn cool so spoil the rear passengers a little bit I love that rear window sunshades are going to be optional for the SEL we do have that option so I am loving that back there by the way if you were curious how many seats are actually in the Outlander the answer to that question is going to be seven two up front three in the middle every time and then two in the back aka seven total so that is the answer to that question there's also surprisingly this is one of the things that always gets me with the outlander upper and lower seat back map pockets so typically you find the lower ones but you very rarely find the upper ones for maybe like a uh, cell phone or a tablet or something like that so that is pretty cool i love that they are up there that's pretty cool Anyways, then make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the ES. SE trim level is going to add to that leather at surfaces and heated front seats. And then the SEL trim is going to add to that power adjustable front seats, full leather seating and memory settings for up to two different drivers found on the driver's side door there. So overall, seat comfort was actually 100% on point. I love the quilted leather that we have in this SEL as well. And that's continued onto the door. So it really improves the interior quality tenfold by just having that quilted leather like Audi traditionally does. So you would think this is a much more expensive car or SUV than it really is. So I'm a huge fan of that. But anyways, like I said, seating was plenty comfortable, but then take a look at the steering wheel. It continues to get better. Tilt and telescoping, of course, leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. Heated steering wheel that is gonna be optional for the SEL. So 10 and two grips, like I said, are super thick and I kind of like the perforated feel to the steering wheel as well. So 
Big fan of the design and the thick grips and all that fun stuff. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons are located on the one side. Got your Mitsubishi logo on the top. Lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. So all I am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauge cluster there. And so speaking of, when it comes to the gauges, if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up, you will get this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Otherwise, you're gonna get an analog gauge cluster. So I do wanna mention that, but since we have the digital gauge cluster, there's three lines on the left side of the steering wheel. If you press that, you have the ability to change the meter view, which is a silly way, honestly, of saying change the gauge look. So you can either choose to display kind of a traditional look or you can choose to display my personal favorite these kind of rolly thingies on the left and the right hand side which look absolutely amazing so huge fan of the customization that you have within the digital gauges and of course when you change the drive modes this is another cool thing it displays up there in incredible quality it also has a picture of the outlander for each individual driving mode so if you put it in mud it shows the outlander going through some deep mud in the middle of a forest if you put it in snow it shows the outlander going through some snow so i love the illustrations and the graphics for the outlander drive modes found on the digital portion of the gauges there big fan but so now then making our way to overall interior quality you can get a panoramic sunroof we don't have it today but that's going to be optional actually on the sel trim overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard across the board auto dimming rear view mirror is going to come on the sel trim level end up wireless phone charger coming with the se trim level and up and that's going to be actually located just in front of the shifter here tri zoom climate control for the sel trim level and up as well and so like i said when it comes to overall interior quality they crushed it Mitsubishi did an amazing job with the overall interior quality. If you covered up the Mitsubishi logo on the steering wheel, you could swear to yourself you're looking at maybe an Audi or something like that. There's a little bit of hidden storage by the driver's side right knee. I like that. I like that there's a texturized silver finish around the shifter and drive mode selector. And speaking of, even the perimeter of the drive mode selector is finished in kind of a texturized, very high quality finish, just like the climate control settings. Like I said earlier, I like the texturized leather pattern that is on the seats continued onto the doors as well even around the power window buttons which are also texturized and finished in silver not just a basic black plastic they're texturized and again around the buttons it's kind of got this carbon fiber texturized look although it's not authentic carbon fiber but it does feel nice like everything about the interior from the gloss black finishes around the electromechanical parking brake it's done in a very high quality way like they crushed it with the interior quality it's all i'm saying anyways you do have a 12 volt power outlet in front of the shifter a couple usb charging ports you got your dual cup holders behind the shifter and within the center armrest not a ton of space actually within the center armrest so wouldn't mind if they made that a little bit bigger if possible but like i said overall I love the interior quality on this thing. They did an amazing job. I'll just put it that way. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because it is gonna differ amongst the trim levels. Go figure. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the ES, but all other trim levels being the SE trim level and up is going to get a nine inch color touchscreen display. But either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but with the nine inch screen, you do get a factory navigation system if you were interested in that. You can actually check out fuel prices within that screen, stock information, weather information as well so good bit included there and of course your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there's a couple of them you do have six speakers that come standard across the board but there is a 10 speaker Bose sound system available or I should say optional for the SEL trim so Having said that, we don't have that Bose sound system, but fortunately we do have the six speaker. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. That's freaking good for a six speaker sound system. I gotta be honest, there is a ton of bass and actually clarity was on point as well. Like I said, for six speakers, that's one of the better six speaker sound systems that I heard in quite a while. Don't get me wrong, the Bose sound system is gonna crush it. And I've had those sound systems in my cars before and they're pretty darn reliable, they've never failed me, but for six speakers, like I said, that was pretty darn good. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Outlander in reverse, you will find a very high definition rear view camera coming standard across the board. Also, if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, you're gonna get that surround view monitor you guys are looking at to the right, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Outlander is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. 
Front side side carrying airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, forward collision mitigation system, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist, reverse automatic braking then as well. Then if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, you're going to get adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, lane departure prevention, and traffic sign recognition then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I think this thing is styled beautifully. It's definitely a very nice look, especially up front. I love the look up front. So overall, it's a very good looking SUV in my opinion. Bose sound system is going to be stellar. I think I reviewed it last year, if I remember correctly. That's why I'm saying that. I'm pretty sure that was absolutely amazing. Digital gauges are wonderful. They absolutely crushed it with those digital gauges on this thing. Personally, I would get the SEL all wheel drive like we have today for the digital gauges, for the heated rear seats and so many other features as well. So I'm a big fan of this particular configuration that we have, which is personally why I chose to drive this one and showcase it on the video. The only constructive criticism that would probably make this thing absolutely perfect for me because you have the 20 year, 200,000 mile warranty if you drive to Younger Mitsubishi here in Hagerstown. The only thing I would add would be multicolor ambient lighting like a lot of the competitors do because I know my kids would absolutely love that changing all the different colors of the ambient lighting. I know Kia and Hyundai do that. So I think Mitsubishi could probably easily pull that off and just make this thing absolutely perfect. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new 20 2023 outlander in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold